play him not more than one series. One series was not, you know, if he needed to go back in the game for some reason, we had to put him back in. He was ready to go. He was fine to go. My thing was just for him. His last snap was the third play of the game at LSU last year. So he's been out of it for a whole year, even in practice and all that stuff, just playing practice reps. So him was to get him in the game, to get him in the, the mindset of the game, you know, playing game speed. And now it is just, you know, let him go play. And I, you know, good thing is I didn't even use him. I didn't use him a game for the whole game. I didn't use, use all those guys. So it was great. My whole plan going there was hopefully to get those young guys reps and get a lot of them. I just wanted to make sure Tobias knew it's not practice speed anymore. It's game speed. It's anyway. games and all those guys is game reps. Yeah. Now let's you know now to practice. You know, to lose a guy when we don't. You're up 30. Whatever it was, the score was. I don't need to do that. I was talking to Coach Mullen. It's a little off topic, but uh, I guess you guys as assistants are 0 5 against Auburn, and really that that game in 07. Tell me about that when I guess Dan had to go to the hospital, get an appendectomy. I'm sure it was oh, yeah, pretty crazy. Before. 24 hours. He was like purple in the box the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just something, I, it's one of those things that, you know, it's one of those things in Korea, I don't kind of try to dwell on it. I don't look at it because I don't want to put any more into this game than you put in the next game. Every game's important. Um, but it's one of those things, I mean, obviously now it's been three different head coaches. I mean, it's been two different head coaches. It's been a lot of different people that you've seen, so it's not, I hate to dwell anything more than that, but, you know, it's still like anything. Were you surprised to see Dan in the box that night in 07 after having well, I didn't know what happened. Really? I mean, it was, oh, I think it was pregame or, it was because we played that. I'm sure we played that game early in the morning or late at night. I can't remember anymore. Right? Then all of a sudden it was said, "Well, he wasn't there." And we did our walkthrough. And it was like he's not here. Okay, we'll call plays. And, and we, the first thing goes, well, "Where is he?" And then it was, "Oh, he's in the hospital. He'll be back for the game." And then he showed back up. So, gotta win games. Do you One thing is, who had the most snaps in the offensive line of the night? What night? Oh, Texas State night. Oh, I think it's not seven. <laughs> no, 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 no. Better go not find someone else that, for that. Not quite that far. Who had the most snaps? The total. I guess it would have been Malone or, or uh, Hard Hard I think Day. they were – no, Dylan – I think Dylan, Blaine, Justin – Dylan, Blaine, Justin, Ben Rollins, somewhere about between 40 and 50. Mm-hmm. I think 40 and 50. I think we had 70 snaps. They're all in the range of 40 and 50, and that was just – you know, like anything, the reason for – and they keep it Dylan before anybody gets from keeping Dylan and Blaine there's because Damian and Justin and Ben Ringer that I, I didn't want to yank all five of them at one time because you sit there, someone's got to lead and someone's got to make sure the communication is going before, you know, Justin was in there was fine. He had Charles and he had yeah. Dylan. Then when they take Gabe out, it's okay. Now there's two young guys in there and need someone in the middle of the whole thing. Well, plus yeah. you have Dak Prescott coming in. He needs a little familiarity too. Yeah, I didn't want, you know, again, it's his first snaps that you know he's going to, you know, any person that goes in that first time, they're going to stay and bumble them. As they walk in there and nervous, and like I told those guys on Thursday, I said, eventually he's going to walk in there. I said, that's your job now. Have Sid Lake right out? Uh, I think he was 80 something, 80 percent. Very well. I mean, great well. I think it's more of a, all the guys was more of, you know, little things. Little things that to me in any game like this, you can, I can grade a lot harder than I do some of the things. It's just about finishing blocks, you know, finishing things, a little pad level stuff, and footwork, and things like that, and hand placement that we got to get corrected as we go through. Everybody, the everybody talks about LSU's defensive ends, but Auburn's got a pretty stout couple of guys off the edge. I think they have four yeah, sacks. Yeah, I think the one thing, yeah, I think the one thing with the, the four guys there, 55 and uh, 55, I think it's 94, 95, 10, 13, 10. I think the one thing they do is they get off the ball and get off the ball fast. Um, you know, again, they, they got some good quick speed. And those two guys, in which luxury they have the two inside, they play about four guys inside, too, that they're big, stout, 320-pound guys, 315-pound guys that are going to hold the middle that give the luxury for those two outside guys to come off the edge and play fast. A little late here, sorry. but.